Wagwan people. It is a Wednesday morning. Hope yako iko sawa. Yetu pia iko sawa. Shut up boy here holding it down for Willis Raburu. Kama kawa, kama jana, kama leo na vile kesho itakuwa. <laughs> All So ikiwa Wednesday, kama kama unajua tunaongelea health and lifestyle and today we want to talk about cancer and lifestyle. Sawa sawa. So kama uko na swali yoyote, ile ishaikuwa kwa kichwa yako. Any question you've ever had about cancer and the lifestyle around it, this is your time. This is your chance to my SMS 2242 ama pale kwenye hashtag daybreak ask your questions alafu utajibiwa. Mimi nitauliza. Ukiuliza ninauliza alafu utajibiwa. Niko na panel hapa. We start with you dog. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Niko salama kabisa. Yes, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Waroi from Mata Hospital. All right. Yes. Kabisa. Zaya, uko poa? Niko poa sana. Ndio pa viewers are fine too. True that. My name is Felix Okot. Yes. Uh, clinical nutrition is at Mata Hospital. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Ah, area moja. life. zungu, na So, doc, let's just start with the normal question. Yeah. So, what is cancer? What is cancer? So, cancer, cancer is uh, defined as it's a disease basically. It's a disease that is uh, caused by the abnormal uh, division of cells in the body. So when you have cancer in the lung, it means there's abnormal division of cells in the lung. When you have cancer in the breast, it means you have uh, an uncontrolled division of abnormal cells in the, in, the, in the breast. So it's generally when you're having cells that are dividing up sorry abnormally in any part of the body that is the simplest definition of cancer okay yes so people have been talking so much about cancer and, and mm -hmm. its prevalence it yeah. should be declared a national mm -hmm. disaster mm -hmm. so what is the uh, generally the world prevalence yeah so cancer is a leading cause of uh, death worldwide um, the numbers are 19.3 million people worldwide uh, are usually diagnosed with cancers. There are different kinds of cancers. Yeah. So you'll find a total of 19.3 million people worldwide yearly are uh, diagnosed with cancer. And deaths are also quite high. Up to 10 million deaths occur from cancer. That's about one in every six deaths. Is One is out of cancer. Yeah. So it's quite it's quite a very huge epidemic, it's quite a huge, uh, it, it's quite fast, the, the numbers are quite high. Yes, and uh, today we'll be speaking about mostly about breast cancer, but the most common breast, uh, the most common cancers worldwide is uh, there's lung cancer, mm -hmm. followed by breast, then there is colon and rectal cancer, what you call colorectal cancer, then we have prostate, gastric, and now the numbers go down like that. So yes, the numbers are quite, quite high. All right. Yes. So people uh, say there are lifestyle diseases mm -hmm. and everything. So I want to know from you, Felix, mm -hmm. he, can we classify cancer as a lifestyle disease? No, we can't ca classify cancer as a lifestyle disease, mm -hmm. but we can say lifestyle really plays a major role, a contributing role in causing cancer. Mm -hmm. Actually, a higher percentage of lifestyle changes can really play a role in causing cancer. Mm -hmm. And as Daxaria said, cancer, what cancer is, I would just want to say, and in a smaller, in a simpler way, uh, we have cells in our body. Mm -hmm. So every single day as we live in sim simple terms, our cells die, okay? Mm -hmm. And as our cells die, so that we live a longer life, our cells need to regenerate, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. So, in a normal person, the cells regenerate and the, the cells die, and then the, the ones, the new cells replace the dead cells. Okay. But when the the, the, the the dead cells are so much that the, the, the new cells doesn't regenerate, so the dead cells become more and affect the cells that surround them. Okay. Now, when these cells are affected by the dead cells, which die so fast, and the new ones are not regenerated so fast as compared to how they die. This causes a cancerous cells, a cells that is affecting other healthy cells, okay? Right. So how does life cell can lead one to cancer? Mm -hmm. and one of the uh, factors is obesity. So obesity is one of the factors that causes several cancers, mostly breast cancer, uh, colorectal cancer, and all, m most of the cancers. So how is obesity connected to cancer? Uh, when you are obese, you have f excessive fatty tissues. So fatty tissues tend to affect the, the, the healthy cells because they affect oxygen production. Mm -hmm. 
to the healthy cells. For cells to be healthy, they require sufficient amount of, amount of oxygen. So when the cells don't have a, enough oxygen to be healthy, due to fatty tissues that impair them, they tend to start behaving abnormally. Apart from that, the, the studies show those who are obese, let's say men and women who are obese, are more prone to breast cancer. Remember, even men can have breast cancer. It's not only on women. Mm -hmm. And men can have breast cancer. Most men who have breast cancer are mostly obese in nature. So obesity in men affect the testosterone hormone. Men have hormone testosterone. Women have the hormone egestrone hormone. Okay. So when the testosterone, when you're obese, the more the testosterone is changed to egestrone. That's why you see some men having breasts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're a man, you start seeing symptoms of you having breasts. You need to go for breast examination, like a woman goes for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so for women also, if you are heavier than normal, higher chance of breast cancer. Apart from that, the more the fatty tissues, the more the production of, of estrogens, which causes cancer. Mm -hmm. Then, apart from that, we have also insulin resistance. So overindulgence in sugary food causes your insulin to be resistant, whereby the cells are not able to shake sugar as possible. So overindulgence in sugary food causes inflammation of cells. When the cells are inflamed due to too much sugary food, it can pose you to cancer, colon cancer, and so on. Apart from that, we have foods high in things like called cyanide. Cyanide, you can get them from cassava, uh, from, from, uh, we have cassavas, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have even some meats. Then we also have fl aflastoxin. That is just a, a fungal. It's a fungi, a fungal in, in food such as we have groundnuts, we have maize and others. So when you're taking your maize to be grounded or when you're keeping your maize, if your maize have a bit of mold in it, be very cautious. And that's why we say dry your food, maize well. Apart from that, we have mercury, foods rich in mercury and um, other metals. And that's why you see some sugars, we say some sugars have mercury, depending on our machines for milling, you remember some of our machines are not of good quality and they're not also not checked much of the metallic components in our salt. So I think that is one area that the government should be ensure that the foods we take are not rich in mercury, such as we have the seafoods. Seafoods are very high in mercury, the sea fish and all that, very high in mercury. Apart from that, we also have fatty food, which we have said affect the fat, sugary food, then food rich in preservatives. So, and that's why I really tend to advise people, do not take much of these commercial foods, the canned foods, and these preservatives, commercial spices. The preservatives are not food for our cells. So when the cells take them in, the cells don't take them as food. They're chemicals in nature. So they alter our cells. When the cells are altered, the more they will uh, uh, affect their healthiness and this can cause cancer. And apart from that, we, we talk of microwave, right? Yeah. So people talk of microwave causing cancer, but ideally research has shown microwave food cannot cause cancer. Because how, how, how does microwave work? There, there is something called uh, a magnetron, okay? We have a magnetron, a metallic nature of microwave, whereby when electricity goes in, the, the magnetron turns the, the heat to microwave. These are smaller waves of it. Then these waves goes to the metallic lining on the microwave, okay? Then these are taken as a light radiation to food. So the, 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 the waves doesn't really affect the food. The, 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 the radiation doesn't stay in the food. It just breaks down the water molecules. It shakes them up so that it gets it. But how would microwave uh, cause cancer, okay? It depends with the distance you are with the microwave. And that's why we say, whenever you're using microwave, stay two meters away from it. And the reason why the door is made such as the waves cannot go out is so that it doesn't, the waves doesn't come to yourself and denature yourself. Mm -hmm. And the waves and the door can only go about two inches from it. So when you're two meters, you are away from it, okay? Mm -hmm. So microwave food cannot cause uh, cancer. cancer. But the microwaves can cause cancer, but not so much because we have two different types of rays. We have ionizing rays and ionizing rays, non-ionizing rays. So ionizing rays are rays which have so much heat, their wavelength is very short. So they, are, they impact on yourself. 
the, 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 the ionizing waves are the ones that are used in X-rays, okay? Mm -hmm. The X-rays, radiation, uh, uh, the treatment for cancers, and that's why some of the radiation you are used, to, people go for the X-rays. If you are often using them or often closer to it, to those rays, they can easily alter your, tells, uh, your cells. And that's why in Austral, when they're going to do an X-ray or high radiation for someone, people get away from it mm -hmm. because it can affect you. All right. So such rays, and then the, the ionizing rays are also on the sun, the ultraviolet heat. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's not good to stay so much on the sun, mm -hmm. uh, mostly the sun between 12, 12 p.m., let's say 11, PM, 11 a.m. to around 3. The, that heat is so much, that wave is so much. Mm -hmm. And if you denature your cells in the skin, that can cause skin cancer. And that's why we say when you want to stay on the sun, stay at 10 a.m. or 4 p.m. We have, uh, we have other, other GMO foods, mm -hmm. and that's why when you're taking your food, GMO foods, it depends. How often do you want to stay in G this GMO food? They will denature, denature your cells. Mm -hmm. So check the reading. Apart from that, we have uh, things, we have the sodas, the chemicals in them. Don't be prone to them. The radio frequently, frequency waves on your phone. This can cause cancer, and that's why when you're sleeping, stay two meters away from your phone. Like people sleep and cause, put the phone on top of their pillows, that is wrong. The radio frequency waves can affect your, your brain and, and the cells around it. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's not good for you. Apart from that, uh, there are several other things that we can, we can talk about. So okay. staying healthy, checking your food, smoke, lung cancer, tobacco. Okay. Tobacco can cause lung cancer because mm -hmm. it affects your, your airways, okay? The okay. cells and all that. Mm -hmm. Even hot tea causes cancer. I love Very hot tea. Mm -hmm. Because what, how does hot tea cause cancer? And that is esophageal cancer. The heat of that tea denature your cells around this esophagus. So when often you take that hot tea, and this is much on the western region, people love hot tea. Mm -hmm. That is much of the esophageal, esophageal cancers, okay? okay? So they denature your cells around that area, okay? The prostate cancer, those who truck drivers for long, mm -hmm. when you sit for a longer time or you wear, how do I say it, uh, panties that are so tight, okay? Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the friction around that area can cause that. So we have ways that we can prevent one from having cancer and so many other causes, alcohol intake, okay, okay? and so many others. So mm -hmm. we shall come to that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Umesema kuongea na mtu wako usiku kwa simu hivi mkilala for three hours ni makosa. <laughs> Your radio frequency <laughs> is, is so high. I hope mezikia. So doc, yes. uh, now I want us to get to breast cancer mm -hmm. because uh, I'm sure it's something that mm -hmm. your job you come across a, mm -hmm. a, a lot, Cindy. Yes. So you can tell me about the risk factors mm -hmm. and the causes of, of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so in addition to what uh, my colleague was mentioning about cancer, I'd like to add on the fact that different types of carcinogens that come into play for cancer for cells to transform from normal cells into cancerous or malignant cells. So there was the, he mentioned about the chemical carcinogens like alcohol and smoking, you have asbestos, you have aflatoxins from people who store their uh, seeds in a granary, then you have physical as as he mentioned, the UV radiation or the radiation from the X-rays. And then I have biological carcinogens is what I wanted to mention. Biological are things like viruses, bacteria, and parasites. So you have viruses that are commonly known to cause cancers like uh, HPV virus, hepatitis B and C virus. You have H. pylori, which is a bacteria that is known to cause gastric cancers. So all this with an interplay of genetics also, the, the, the interplay of carcinogens with genetics are the ones that lead to the transformation of normal cells through a multiple stage process into cancer cells or malignant cells. So now into breast cancer. Breast cancer is uh, the leading cause of cancer in women worldwide and it's also the leading cause of cancer death in women worldwide, uh, accounting for about... Um, 2.8 million women get ca uh, breast cancer daily. So some of the risk factors of breast cancer are usually, one, uh, if you have history of breast cancer in the contralateral breast, it means you have a higher chance of developing cancer on this, 
on the on the opposite breast. Uh, history of uh, early menarche or and late menopause. Menarche being the age at which one starts um, their menstrual cycle, and menopause being the age at which the menstrual cycle ends. So between when you start earlier than 12 years and when you end your, uh, me, your when you reach menopause later than 55 years is a risk factor. Mm -hmm. Things like nulliparity. Nulliparity is when you've not yet given birth. So that one poses as a risk factor. And then the age at which you get your child. So people who get children earlier in their 20s, mm -hmm. it confers a benefit uh, compared to someone who gets their first child in their 30s. You have a two times risk of developing loping breast cancer. You have things like breastfeeding. So women who breastfeed for exclusively six months and later even up to two years, that is more beneficial than those who do not uh, breastfeed. Family history is also one of a major, major risk factor. And when you talk about family history, we're talking about the age at which this member of the family got cancer. So if they got cancer earlier, then the risk factor is way earlier, uh, is way more, sorry. And then uh, if it's a close relative, that is if it's a mother or a sister who has breast cancer, then it means the risk to the relative is also Four, up to four times higher. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the number of relatives, you find there are people who with more than one relative or two relatives who have breast cancer, then it means the risk is also higher. Yeah, so also women who are on oral contraceptives, the ones which are hormonal, that poses a risk factor. And then you have postmenopausal women who take a hormonal replacement therapy therapies because once you reach menopause it means there are some hormones like estrogen and progesterone that are going down or are going low so some opt for replacement therapies so those therapies have been shown to um, increase your chances of getting breast cancer because now you're being exposed to these uh, hormones that are the causative factors of breast cancer because even uh, the risk factor of early menarche and late menopause it's, it's a risk factor because of the prolonged period of time which one is exposed to these hormones. Yeah, so those are some of the risk factors. Then you have the lifestyle, as my colleague was mentioning, uh, lifestyle risk factors, things like alcohol intake, smoking, uh, physical inactivity, obesity. Those are some of the lifestyle uh, risk factors that some that can pose you or can increase your chances of, risk of getting breast cancer. Mm -hmm. yes. Now maybe just to add on top of that, Yes. Uh, studies also show that women who get their first children mm -hmm. Uh, they are above 30 years and do not breastfeed, mm -hmm. have also higher chances of getting breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And also those who start their menstrual cycle, let's say 12 years or those of age, and those women who start their menopause are around 55 years, also have higher chances of getting breast cancer. And those women who also have very compact, uh, thick mm -hmm. breast tissue like I also have a higher chances of breast cancer. That's why it's good for screening. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Ari will tell you the importance of that later on. True that. Yes. So now that you've mentioned screening, mm -hmm. we should now talk about the, the signs mm -hmm. and symptoms, mm -hmm. what to look, to, to, uh, to look out for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you'll find in most uh, clinical setups, the main presenting symptom that women will come with is lumps and allow us to dwell with women. But yes, yes as my colleague mentioned, breast cancer does affect both genders. Okay. But in the male gender, the incidence is quite low. It's up to 1%. Okay. So uh, allow us to dwell with women, okay. uh, the breast cancer that affects women. So most women will present with a lump or a swelling in either of the breasts. So that's the main or the most common presenting complaint. So besides a lump, one can present with a discharge in the nipples. It could be bloody discharge. It could be watery or milky discharge. It could be, uh, they can also present with change in size and shape of the breasts. Either the size has become bigger or has become smaller. They can present with skin changes. And with skin, there are different changes that one can uh, observe, either dimple of the skin. They can have something we call pewter orange appearance. That's the appearance of a skin peel. If you've seen how uh, the skin peel of an orange, if you've seen how an orange appears, okay. there's that appearance that can occur in a breast and that's usually uh, an alarming feature because it signifies malignancy. And then in the skin you can also have scaling, you can have um, dryness of the skin, ulcerations. Yes, and then now you observe the nipple. So with the nipple, as I mentioned, you can have discharge, you can have retraction of the nipple, deviation to either side. So those are some of the common presenting complaints. And if anyone notices any of those complaints or any of those sorry symptoms, it's always best to seek um, to, 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 to visit your healthcare provider so they can be able to advise you further or 
or do further tests. So do these symptoms say appear like two, three symptoms together or, mm -hmm. or is just one symptom? Because mm -hmm. I would ask, say, mm -hmm. it's a breastfeeding woman, mm -hmm. yes? Mm -hmm. And then you say that discharge could be happening. Mm -hmm. And probably they'd think it's milk, mm -hmm. it's normal. Mm -hmm. So do these symptoms appear like one symptom or you mm -hmm. might have two, three, four symptoms at the same time? Mm -hmm. So symptoms are different and uh, the women or the individuals are different. So you may find one who presents with one symptom only, that's a breast lump. You may find one who presents with discharge together with skin changes. You may find one who presents with um, uh, what uh, the pewda orange appearance or the dimpling of skin so you can have more than one symptom it's not typical for one to have two symptoms or three anyone can present with any number of symptoms mm -hmm. yes and it's always um, advised when you notice those symptoms as early as you do notice them yes. just seek the, the the medical assistance true actually that brings me to my next question then how how do you detect these signs early? How do you detect cancer mm -hmm. early, well before it gets to a different level? We, of course, we shall talk about stages mm -hmm. as we proceed, but how do you detect it early okay. in advance? Mm -hmm. So that's what we call screening, and that's what we advocate uh, to all women. And as we try to create awareness of breast cancer, we mainly emphasize on screening. So screening is where a woman does yearly checks. So even when you don't have any symptoms, when you don't have any complaints, you just visit your hospital, or your healthcare provider and they do certain number of tests. So when we're examining a lady who's come maybe for breast cancer check, there's something called a triple uh, assessment. So in triple assessment, we do a clinical examination. Clinically, we assess the lady. Then there's imaging and then there's something we call histology. So in clinical examination is where now the healthcare provider will examine the lady, look at the, examine the breast, look at uh, any signs that are from the normal, any abnormal features. Uh, and then they will observe and also palpate and look for any masses. And then after the clinical exam now is what we, we do imaging next. And the main imaging modality that is used for screening is what we call a mammogram. Mm -hmm. Mammogram is a form of an X-ray that is done to the breast. And it's usually advised that all women who are above 40 years of age mm -hmm. to always <coughs> get an annual screening. So with a mammogram, what it does, it will detect any calcifications in that breast. Any lumps will be detected any change in architecture of the breast, any nodes even all the way to the axilla or to the armpits will be seen. So the best uh, screening modality is the imaging, which is the mammogram. And that's for ladies above 40 years and above. And then you have younger ladies whose breast tissue is a bit more dense due to the glandular tissue. So younger ladies are advised to do more of ultrasounds. But if you have a family history of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, cervical cancer, it is advised even you start earlier, not always uh, the cutoff of age 40. You can start even at age 30 if there's that strong family history of breast cancer. And then you have things like tumor markers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are those uh, laboratory tests you can do at the hospital. So there's one specific for breast cancer. So you can also go and do those tumor markers. But the best screening modality is the imaging. So if it, excuse me, you find that even when you do not have any symptom, even when you don't have any lump, there is something we call carcinoma in situ. Mm -hmm. So with this mammogram, when you do a mammogram early enough, you'll find that it will be able to detect even those small tumors or those small uh, swellings or lumps that you're not able to, to feel yourself. So the best thing is screening, which is done early. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so before we know, we, 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 you, you, you've been screened and you've mm -hmm. been found, say you, you, you have, say, the cancer, mm -hmm. before we, we get to that. Now mm -hmm. an screening how do they detect signs I, I, I will say screening is important for everyone so for men if you're obese you can go for the breast screening which is <laughs> but not common to most men uh -huh. it should be done. yeah but it should be done yeah. okay. most men just go for breast screening yeah you'll be screened and they check that but prostate screening is something very important for men above 35 years mm -hmm. which is very important for every man who is old above 35 years because mm -hmm. you need your prostate to be screened. There are different types of screening that will be done for you. Mm -hmm. That is very, very important. But generally, ideally, 
let's have caution. Whenever you see a lump that is abnormal for long term, mm. for a long time, just go ch get a checkup. What is a long time and what is a no a abnormal lump? Let's, let's say, say let's what say. What, what, what time frame? <laughs> say maybe I have a lump and it's two weeks. It's two no, weeks. No, no, I'm that, thinking, that, I, that, I, that, that, When I, do I realize <laughs> now here? I, I need now to go get I, checked. I, I would say, in my opinion, a lump that takes more than three months in my opinion, would be abnormal. But doctor will add on that. Okay. And then also drastic weight loss. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, and then pigmentation in the skin that is abnormal. Those who have pigments on the hair, mm. on the head, on the scalp, on the skin and all that, that is abnormal mm. for a long time. On the hair? Uh, if, if, my hair the if my hair starts changing white. <laughs> you know the whitish, the oh. pigmentation on the skin, <laughs> oh, okay. which is abnormal. Uh, maybe there's something that's wrong with your skin. Mm -hmm. Apart from the breast that doctor is saying, because I believe people are interested in cancer in general, yes. when you have uh, abdominal conditions, such as uh, issues with your stomach, uh, often bloating and gas, mm -hmm. go for checkup. You might mm -hmm. never know if it is long term what is causing that. Okay. If you have issue with the uh, long term constipation, issue with your, how do you call it? The, hemorrhoids or issue with your anal area, mm -hmm. a lot of pain often, bloody, uh, uh, you see some blood in your stool for a long time, just go for checkup, mm -hmm. okay? okay? Uh, pain, just uh, just anything that is abnormal, it's good to go for checkup. But doctor will add on how long mm -hmm. should a lamb be classified <laughs> as, as abnormal. Mm -hmm. All right, yes. Doctor, yes. as you tackle that one, mm -hmm. also say now, you. Uh, uh, someone has gone for the screening mm -hmm. and now uh, they've been found to have the, uh, mm -hmm. cancer. So mm -hmm. What is the management mm -hmm. process around it mm -hmm. and what happens next? Mm -hmm. So with the lump, mm -hmm. so I'd like to say lump of any, anyone who finds a lump of any kind, mm -hmm. any size, yes. just seek that medical advice mm -hmm. because time is very important when it comes to cancer. Mm -hmm. You find that any cancer, when it's detected early, the treatment is usually 100% effective any time it's detected early. So the longer you stay with a lump, and this lump is cancerous, then you're you're increasing your chances of not having effective treatment or you're increasing your chances of morbidity and mortality. So in case you find any abnormality of any kind, it's very good to seek that medical advice. Go see your healthcare provider, go see your doctor, go see, uh, go seek help in a hospital. So do not wait with a lamp. But uh, the good thing about uh, lamps is that most of them, as much as it's the most common presenting complaint, you find that most of them are usually benign. Benign meaning it's not cancerous or it's not malignant. Mm -hmm. When I say malignant, I mean something that is invasive and that something that spreads easily. So when we say a cancer is malignant, it means once it develops in its original area, it will invade the surrounding tissues and then it will spread to other areas through the circulation or through the lymphatics. Lymphatics are at, uh, they help with immunity. So it's what it's lymph is what helps flow with flow of interstitial fluid in our bodies. So with any lump that is found or any abnormality that is found, do not wait. Just seek that help. Because uh, early treatment, when it started, survival rates are way higher, morbidity is reduced, mortality is reduced, and you even find treatment is less expensive. Because you find treatment, sorry, treatment for cancers is usually very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. So the earlier you find it and the earlier the treatment is done, then it means the, the treatment also becomes less expensive. Okay. Yes. So I'd asked, I'd asked uh, the management. now you, the management of mm. it, but before you go to that, mm. see, we, we see what people are saying from home. No problem. Uh, mm. so I am feeling like a doctor already, I think I can answer you. <laughs> <laughs> Ibra. All right. The first one from SMS is, does COIL method of family planning cause cancer? Mm, so that's a good question. So okay. when you're using a coil, we have two types of coils. We have the hormonal type and the non-hormonal type. So the hormonal type, since you're having, um, you're bringing in hormones in your body, you're bringing in progesterone and you're bringing in estrogen. And this cancer is known to feed on these hormones because it needs these hormones in order to, to continue growing or to continue multiplying. So that can cause or can pose a risk factor. Mm -hmm. Any form of hormonal contraceptive. Mm -hmm. Yes, non-hormonal one really does not. Okay. Yes. Ms. Kia, your next one, Bado SMS, kindly highlight throat cancer due to the prevalence. 
Mm, I don't know what he meant by highlight, but okay. yes. <laughs> Talk about it, say something about mm, it. Yeah. Uh, maybe also it's management mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. ar around. Yeah, throat cancer is actually quite prevalent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some of the causes of uh, throat cancer is what we call tobacco chewing. Tobacco chewing, chewing of tobacco is, is one of the major or main uh, risk factors. Others can be genetics, because you find that if you had a family history, your grandfather had uh, uh, that used to chew tobacco, and maybe the cells within his body mutated, mm -hmm. and he has that gene, it can be transferred to the next generation. So genetics does play a factor, chewing of tobacco, smoking, and also environmental factors, air pollution. Um, there are so many factors that can, uh, yes, can lead to throat cancer. Probably. Management is usually chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or surgery, mm -hmm. depending on the size, depending on the stage okay. of the cancer, and depending on how much it has metastasized. All right. Yes. Hi. Next one. What if you have skin disease? Is it high risk to get cancer? Skin disease. So there are very many different types of skin diseases. Uh, from the mildest forms as eczema, you can have eczema, you can have dry skin, you can have uh, uh, allergies. Okay, eczema is a type of uh, allergy. So with skin, there's a prevalence of skin cancer, what we call melanoma, scale melanoma. So it depends. Um, I'd really advise these patients just seek help from a doctor to be able to, to know is this skin disease, is it transforming to cancer? Because mm -hmm. Another thing that can cause skin cancer is ulcers. You may find people who have um, long-going cancers, uh, long-lasting uh, chronic ulcers, mm -hmm. maybe of the foot or uh, wounds that don't heal. Okay. Those ones can turn into cancer, what we call margarine ulcers. Okay. Yeah, so it's always good to seek help. Uh -huh. Let that tissue be sampled, let that skin be, be checked mm -hmm. and... and, and the doctor will find out is it cancer or not. Okay. Yes, especially those people who have uh, long-standing chronic wounds mm -hmm. uh, that results from burns, burns that don't heal. Maybe you got a burn maybe five years ago, it resulted into a wound. That wound is not healing. Let that wound be checked because they do transform to become cancerous. Kabisa. Mm. So you, when you mentioned ulcers, I thought you were talking about normal ulcers, the ones we know, like the layman, gastric, that umbo to an eye. Uh, <laughs> a wound. Yeah. An ulcer is a, a wound. wound is an ulcer. Yes, yes. yes. Also, even mm. when they talk about ulcers, it's a wound. It's, it's a wound. It's a wound. It's a wound. Yeah, an ulcer is a general term for a wound. Yeah. Oh. So I think it's commonly used out there. So when you say ulcers, you know, gastric. Yeah, a uh, uh, oh. <laughs> so like you don't to ulcer. You mm. don't it's a breakage of skin. Okay. Mm. Sour. Aya. Another one, Ibra. Aya. Are lymph nodes in the body related to cancer? Uh, yes. So lymph node is one of the lymph nodes are one of the main ways in which cancers metastasize. So when you find yourself with swollen lymph nodes, sometimes it's just due to it's it's a reactive uh, process or inflammatory process. The people who get lymph nodes that swell behind the ear when they're getting upper respiratory tract infections, you can be having a throat infections and then you find you have swollen uh, lymph nodes. I've seen it mainly in the pediatric group, but even adults there are those who do get it. So lymph nodes are one of the main ways through which cancer spreads. So you may find you have a lump in the armpit. Mm -hmm. So have it checked because it could be. It, it means once you have cancer in the lymph nodes, it means it has metastasized because that is how it spread. You could be having cancer in uh, the lung, mm -hmm. but if cancer, the same cells are found in the lymph nodes, it means it's metastasizing. It's moving to other areas. Okay. Metastasizing meaning it's, it's spreading. Okay. Yeah, so when you have cancer, maybe even in the brain, and it's found in the lymph node, it means it's also it's spreading. So there's also there are cancers that are main specifically found in the lymph nodes, what we call uh, lymphomas. So yes, lymph nodes. When you have any abnormality of the lymph node, it's good to have it checked because you can have cancers arising from the lymph node themselves. There are very many different types of lymphomas that uh, that are based with uh, based on lymph nodes. You have Hodgkin's lymphomas, non-Hodgkin's lymphomas, or now you can have lymph nodes being the source through which cancer is spreading. Okay. Uh, so have them checked. What is a lymph node? Say, for someone that does not know English mm. or, or does not know the word or the term, how would you describe it? Say, in a kitu in a furawapi? I think it's just an organ, 
around this area of Rocky Farm, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. but, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's important for several immune components and mm -hmm. hormonal control of mm -hmm. the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a very important organ in the body for immune and hormonal control. Mm -hmm. uh, and as Doc has said, so long as the cancer reaches your lymph node, it can spread even to your liver mm. and different several organs. Yeah. So that will be a, another stage. That's why we call mm -hmm. stage one, yeah. stage two, yeah. stage three. Mm -hmm. So, but the clarity can still highlight more on that. So as he mentioned, uh, a lymph node or lymph nodes are part of the immune system. Okay. So they carry what we call the interstitial fluid. So this fluid, as it moves through the body, in, I'll use uh, layman terms, they carry waste material, they carry bacteria, okay. they carry viruses. So they help in clearing or flushing out of these viruses from the body. Okay. So the moment um, <clears throat> you have, sometimes people even get swelling of their feet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's usually due to that lymph, uh, the lymph nodes having problems, meaning the fluid is not uh, flowing very well. Okay. So there's build up of interstitial fluid. Mm -hmm. So lymph nodes there, we have them throughout the body. We have supraclavicular around this area. We have behind and in front of the ears. We have around the inguinal area. The, there are many <laughs> throughout the body and their main function is immunity. They confer immunity. Yes. Sawa, sawa. Yeah. Another one, Ibra? Okay. Is it, is it true that beef and greenhouse tomatoes can bring cancer? I think that one is for you. Okay. Really. So, so I, I would say, in my opinion, yes, beef can bring cancer, but in so many ways, okay? Mm -hmm. So one, the beef will bring cancer depending on the feed mm -hmm. of the cow. So if cow, the cow is fed on grass that is sprayed with chemicals, mm -hmm. this generally, this meat will have this component, depending on the levels that are sprayed, okay? Mm -hmm. So the levels, if they're spread and in that meat, and then you check this meat, it can denature yourself, cells, and lead to cancer. And apart from that, like this beef of town that are eating chapati, they're eating mandazi, mm -hmm. and pepper bags are food. Remember, the chemicals in these pepper bags that they eat are not food for our body, okay? Mm -hmm. So when we take this meat, because it's the component in that meat that we're going to use, mm -hmm. that can cause cancer. The other thing is that red meat as carcinogen, and one of them, they have high levels of estrogen, okay? Mm. So if we take too much red meat long term, mm. this can lead to our estrogen levels building up and affecting cancer because it's a hormone in us, in our body. Okay. Then apart from that, we have now, the, when you, when, when you, you choma, how do you call it? When you choma in English. R R roasted, roasted, grill. roasted, smoked, <laughs> and roasted beef. Uh -huh. That is that can cause cancer in a way. Mm -hmm. Also, beef cured or salted, okay, mm -hmm. or beef that is canned, okay, or beef that is cooked under very high temperature because the temperature denature the proteins in meat, and when these proteins are denatured. When we take it, it, it also affects our cells. Right. So we always say when you take meat, actually science says, so long as the meat is well produced, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And when meat is well produced, I mean that the cow is fed on a natural grass or a natural feed mm -hmm. without excessive chemical, the, preserv the preservative chemicals used in meat can also cause cancer, and most preservatives used in food. So if the preservative chemicals are not in high amount, okay? Mm -hmm or you take more of the fresh, feed, fresh meat, which doesn't have much of the preservative, lower chances of getting cancer. Then another thing is, so long as you take meat not above 100 to 130 grams, like twice a week or once a week, the levels of, of carcinogen in this red meat, these are components that cause cancer, the estrogen, the compound, the fatty tissues in them, will have a lower chances of having cancer in red meat because let's talk of Maasai. Mm -hmm. Maasai have been taking meat all their life, mm -hmm. but they don't have cancer. Why? The processing, the meat is fresh. The cow is well fed on natural grass. There is no chemicals used in preservatives or curing or roasting or anything. Actually, Maasai, normally they don't roast meat. They take it raw or any other thing. But apart from that, it's good to cook it at least also. Mm -hmm. Yes. So meat will cause cancer, but it depends on type of meat, storage of meat, uh, processing of meat, uh, and all that. But we said if it is a natural, normal meat that is not processed, 
then don't take, go above 100 to 120 grams twice a week. That will be okay. But avoid much of the choma, the preserved meat, and all that. Those have components that can lead you into cancer. Kabisa. Look up, look over to Tisha to any machoma. You are not worried. Hey, Nasa, you are your smoke. That smoke is carcinogenic. Okay. Yes. Sawa. So. Before we continue with the feedback from home, mm -hmm. we, we we had gotten to the, to the point where now we are talking about management. Mm -hmm. You've gone for screening mm -hmm. and you realized actually you have cancer, mm -hmm. you have breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So what is the management? So some of the, the different management modalities, and I'd like to divide them into three. So you have the supportive management, then you have the definitive management and preventive management. So with supportive management, this is what you do really uh, for the general well-being of this patient. So cancer is a huge diagnosis and it's lifelong, it's a chronic illness. So this is a patient you want to maybe start on counseling and then you check the hydration status. If they are dehydrated, you want to hydrate the patient. If they are anemic because it consumes the red blood cells, you'll want to, to give this patient hematinics or blood builders. Sometimes you can get a superimposed infection, so you can treat that with antibiotics. And then pain medication is very key with cancer patients because these patients are usually under a lot of pain, so analgesic management. So that's mainly on supportive management. So the definitive management, uh, we have three, actually there are four or five different types of management, depending now on the staging. Uh, when you are diagnosing, I mentioned you do histology. That's where you pick a tissue or a biopsy uh, from the lump or from the abnormal tissue. So when you take that histology and it's taken to the lab, um, you can stage that cancer. So if it's stage zero, it's <clears throat> there are stages from zero all the way to six. Mm -hmm. So stage zero means it's carcinoma in situ. That's just a medical term to say that the cancer is in its original place. It's not spread. It's not invaded the surrounding tissues. All the way to stage... Um, uh, now with breast cancer, it, it, it reaches up to stage four. So stage four means it has metastasized or it has grown to other parts of the body. So depending on the staging of this cancer, the doctor will be able to assess what is the best treatment modality. So we have surgery as a, as a mode of management. With surgery, there are different types of surgeries. Um, if a lump is small and it's in one quadrant of the breast, um, the doctor can decide to do what we call a lumpectomy. So the lump, when it's removed, it's lumpectomy. Okay. So they would interfere with other parts of the breast. They'll just remove that lump with maybe a few margins of normal tissue. Okay. So that is what we call breast conserving surgery. Or they can also just remove a segment. So maybe if the lump is a bit bigger, bigger maybe than five centimeters, they can do what we call segmentectomy. You remove a segment of the breast. So those ones are types of breast conserving surgery. That's a woman who does not want to lose the whole of her breast. Mm -hmm. And with those conserving surgeries, you follow up with maybe radiation or chemotherapy after the, the surgery. Then we have what we call total or simple mastectomy, where just the whole affected breast breast is removed. So the breast plus the nipple plus the, the skin, all of it is removed. And this can be followed up later by augmentation surgery or reconstructive surgery where you can put an implant just for cosmetic purposes. So that's what we call total or simple mastectomy. Then we can have um, radical. Radical means you're being more invasive. Mm -hmm. So you remove the breast plus the lymph nodes because we've said um, it can spread to the lymph nodes. So the one that's commonly done in uh, most setups is what we call the modified radical mastectomy. You just remove the breast plus the lymph nodes. So that's with surgery. Oh, then there's one that is rarely done, the radical mastectomy, where you remove the whole breast, you remove the muscle. It's quite intensive and quite invasive, so that one is rarely done. Then with um, you have other modalities like hormonal treatments. So this depends on um, if the tumor, because once you're staging the tumor, you also check its responsiveness to treatment. So there are those modalities you'll check, whether it has certain receptors. So if certain receptors are found to be positive, then you can use hormonal treatment. There are different types of hormonal treatment that are being used today. There's something we call tamoxifen. They're, they're different type. So you can use hormonal therapy. And then there's also radiotherapy. So radiotherapy is also done to make sure that there's no residual cells 
that have been left from the surgery. So it may it also prevents recurrence of, of, of any cancer cells. So besides radiotherapy, there's what you call targeted therapy or immunotherapy, where you use monoclonal antibodies. These are newer methods of treatment that have come up uh, recently, and they're also very effective with treatment. So depending on the stage of your cancer, how big this cancer was, uh, these modalities will, will be used. And in chemotherapy, there's what we call neoadjuvant chemotherapy, which is done before surgery. So if one has a very huge tumor, the, the size of the breast is too big, you can shrink it first with chemo, okay. then you do surgery, then now you continue with chemo. Okay. Yeah, so there are those patients who, we, who even after surgery do chemo up to 10 years or 20 years. Mm. Yes. And, so and, and nutrition generally also plays a role mm -hmm. in management of cancer. Yes. Uh, and uh, one of the factors is most of the nutritional component of cancer is avoid, one is avoid all the carcinogenics. We talk of red meat, those preserved foods, fatty food, sugary foods, and apart from that, refined foods, such as even the white maize. The white maize flour, because for the white maize flour, how it can cause cancer is because they, they pass chlorine gas mm -hmm. to whiten it more and more, and this can affect our cells. So and that's why we say take more of the old grains. But management of cancer now uh, comes, depending on the type of cancer, where is the cancer and the stage of cancer? But generally, all, everyone who has cancer, let's say the ones who have been done for the ectomy, ectomy, dactaria mesemani, it's an opening mm -hmm. for the surgery. Okay. So be it the, 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 any type of the, uh, the uh, surgery that has been done, mm -hmm. these people need to heal, okay? Mm -hmm. I remember we say the cells are multiplying, so they are dying so slow, they are dying so fast, then they should multiply, denaturing them or making them abnormal. So we need something to make these cells work as normal, and these are amino acids. So the specific amino acids or protein that will give to people with cancer depending on the stage. So for those normal people who have just been done a surgery, we can put them on high protein diet. But protein mostly on white meat, which are a natural source and all that, so that to give them enough protein for their cells to multiply as required and for their immune system. We have also foods rich in vitamin C or antioxidant in a way. The fruits generally, okay? Foods rich in vitamin A, the carrots, the papaya. Uh, we have um, uh, the, the watermelon. This tends to prevent bad oxygen molecules or oxidation of your cells, mm -hmm. okay? So things like grapes, uh, uh, things like cherries, berries are also good for cancer, okay? A lot of water, fluids are also good for you, okay? Then apart from that, we need things to prevent the inflammation, the omega-3 fatty acids. And that's why those who take chia seeds tend to have lesser inflammation because it has omega-3 fatty acids. So cod liver oil, omega-3 fatty acids, we can give that. Fish has a good omega-3 fatty acids. But apart from that, the cells need energy, OK? Mm -hmm. So energy, the body needs to take that energy. And that's why, depending on the stage of cancer, we can give you B-complex vitamin, B1, B2, and all that, because they're helping uptake of energy, controlling your hormones and your cells, and mostly they are found in fish, okay? They are found in chicken, they are found in eggs. Remember, cancer due to the medication, either being radiotherapy or chemotherapy, tend to affect appetite of most cancer patients. So we can treat the part of appetite, give you food that will stimulate your appetite, something called anorexia, that is when you have severe loss of appetite, we'll give you foods that will stimulate your appetite, but if it is in a worse way, we can prescribe you for you appetizers, which doesn't affect hormones, because some appetizers also can affect your hormones, okay? okay. Then apart from that, cancer patient reaches a point when they, we call them cachexia now. Mm -hmm. They have lost a lot of weight due to lack of nutrients uptake, they have lost a lot of muscles, and this can arm other body organs. So in this way, we can control the appetite part and then give you high protein food and compose your energy requirement so that you get enough to help you gain that weight. There is also issues of air loss with cancer. So that will give you foods rich in B complex vitamins, or we give you it as a supplement, depending on the range required and the stage. And also foods rich in something called biotin. Biotin is found naturally in eggs, mm -hmm. things like that. But remember, too much eggs also can cause fat. So we'll control that for you to help your air stabilize. So mostly antioxidants, things that prevent oxidation, carrots, some juices, vegetable juices, protein rich food, energy rich food, avoid fatty food, sugary food. But it also depends. There are those who have esophageal cancer. 
okay. right? Or the throat cancer. Mm -hmm. Remember, when you have a throat cancer, you can't swallow. So meaning you won't feed via mouth. So if your Dagona is in a county hostel mm -hmm. where the, uh, there is no efficient tools for management, sometimes you just food put on IV fluid, mm -hmm. okay? And this long time will deprive you from nutrients. So if you have any issues of the throat, mostly we can bypass the stomach and instead of putting a tube by the nose to feed you, mm -hmm. let's say you are conscious, we can even, the a surgery can be done direct to your stomach, called a peg tube. Okay. So you are fed by blended foods and commercial foods. All there right. are those now have cancer of the stomach who give you now, the stomach can't function, meaning no food can go to your stomach. So let's say you have cancer of the stomach, you have having, stomach is functional, but you have diarrhea, we can give you issue, foods that are easy to digest. But if the stomach is not functional, for sometimes and you have cancer, we'll give you total parental feeds. These are feeds that are commercially made, but mostly for hostel based patients that are put by your veins. So nutrition and cancer plays a major role, avoiding the causative agents, and then the feeds are depending now on the stage. Okay, thank you. So what we do, Let's take feedback. Yote, Ibra, give me feedback before to Malaysia. Ah, yes, I. Oh, yeah. There is a condition called multiple myeloma. Mm. Is it a form of cancer and is it treatable? Mm. Can cancer be cured, reduced by consuming ginger, garlic, and other antioxidant foods? Doesn't the dead cells find their way out of the body? Do they just stay in the body and keep infecting good cells to cause cancer? My wife realized she has lumps in her breast. It was handled, but still, when you touch, you feel some abnormality. What should we do? Okay, as, as we come to you, Doc, mm -hmm. with this feedback, mm -hmm. please also, there is a common question mm -hmm. that people or a common phrase that we hear is cancer mm -hmm. stage one, stage two, stage mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. What do these stages mean? Mm -hmm. And can you answer the guy that I said his wife has a bad abnormalities? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So stages of cancer, yes. we normally are able to stage a cancer from a biopsy. That's a tissue sample that is taken from where there's a, a disease. Mm -hmm. So if you have a lump, for example, we do, there are examples of how we can take the sample. There's what we call a fine needle aspiration and if FNA, and there's something we call a core needle biopsy, which is uh, a needle is inserted to where the lump is. We take a much larger tissue sample than that of an FNA. So when you take this sample, it's typed or it's done for cytology in a laboratory. And with that result, we are able to know that um, this cancer is of this stage or it's of this grade. So we have what we call grading of cancers and we have staging. So grading, there are three grades of cancer. So grade one, meaning it's low grade, it's not growing as fast. Grade two is moderate, so it grows faster than low grade, but not um, faster than third grade. Okay. The third grade is uh, it's a cancer that is growing very high. So stages now depends on this tissue that has been taken. Right. And that is what helps us to know, is it stage zero? Zero, I had mentioned earlier, is a, a cancer that has not moved from its original state. And this is the best time to treat this cancer when it's diagnosed early. You treat it early and treatment modalities most of the time work very well with those. So stage one, depending on which type of cancer, uh, each stage will have its own meaning. Like now with breast cancer, an example, stage one will mean the tumor is less than two centimeters and has not gone to the lymph nodes. Stage uh, two will have A and B. So each cancer has its own type of staging and it's dependent on this cytology that has been uh, done from this tissue sample. All right. As mm. wind up, Konogia Mouliza about wife yake menyalitolewa Izo mm -hmm. lumps, lumps. Mm -hmm. Aki bado ki, aki uki feel kuna abnormalities. Mm. What would you advise them to do? I'd advise them to have it checked again. Okay. So another uh, thing I'd like to add, for someone who's had breast cancer before, and maybe they went back and they were told there are no more cancer cells, there's a patient who needs also to do yearly screening, do yearly mammograms so that we check is there any recurrence, because cancer cells sometimes tend to regenerate and they regrow back. So if there were lumps that were removed, at least I'd advise him uh, or the wife to have that sample first taken. Okay. It's done for cytology. If it's cancerous, then have it removed. Sour, sour. Yes. 
haya tukimalizia please tell us jinja eh au ule uliweza kuhusu jinja ukijibu hiyo haraka haraka pia utuambie you can get on social media okay so jinja is something called ginger rolls ginger rolls are natural components in ginger that are, are anti inflammatory so they prevent the inflammation of cells yes they will help but they are not medication okay. apart from that garlic has something called allium is a natural component in garlic mm -hmm. when it's digested or in a, 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 a compound the body can take is called allicin so it's natural antioxidant anti inflammatory and general protects the cells similar to tomatoes raw tomatoes are something called lycop lycopene mm -hmm. that prevent prostate cancer so if you take raw tomato a day very good for you for that so my name is felix okoth you can find me at mata hostel and at mata just uh, call any of their mata line numbers because uh, um, I rotate among their clinics, so I'm not in a specific place. So you'll be able to find me and we'll all, always have a good team that will be able to help you. Apart from that, now we have a well woman's clinic within our hostel. So the well woman's clinic, we, we screen the breast, we screen several issues to do with a woman, the cervical, the kidneys, and several issues. So whenever you're free, you have and you want a checkup, you ca you can come at our well woman's clinic or well man's clinic. We'll screen your breast and several hormonal components and do these procedures. Doctor is saying at a very affordable cost, and the clinics run from Monday to I think a Monday to Friday. Okay. from 8 to 5 p.m. So come to our Well Woman's Clinic. All these issues can be screened and we'll be able to assist you. All right. Yes. Thank you. Doc, mm. where do we get you on social media? These, 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 these questions won't end. <laughs> they won't they, they end. will follow you <laughs> on social media. So yeah, so you? on Instagram, I'm Liz underscore Shiko or mm. on Twitter, just Warui. Mm. Yes. Just Warui or Warui? Just Warui on Twitter. And at, then at again, just yeah, Just Warui, you'll find me on Twitter. That's my Twitter handle. At Just Warui? At Just Warui. All right. Yes, and then again, I work in Mata Hospital. I'm based in the current well branch. Kabisa. Yeah. Asante ni sana. We shall continue with this conversation. Ata kama ni next Wednesday. It should. Indio, because it should. Yeah. Dutu meifungua sasa. Dutu meifungua. There is a lot There's that needs so to be, much. Indio, yes, to be yes. discussed. Yeah. Hata we uloko home, I hope umebambika to the fullest. I hope umepata answers zilu ulikuwa na maswali ulikuwa nazo. Na kama bado uja pata answers kabisa, umesikia socials pali unawafuata unawuliza. Sindio? Ama pio slide kwa DM zangu. Nda kupeleka na step nda wawuliza ni kujibu. Au <laughs> siyo? Now, by the way, kabla tuondoke, kumbukeni Luciano atakuwa Kenya.